God bless you, you deed, and shalom, beloved ones. Join me as we go on a journey together, discovering how the writings of the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament connect. I'm going to leave my life. I'm going to leave my life for Yeshua. Shalom, Yedidim, and God bless you, beloved ones. My name's Rabbi Schneider. Welcome today to this edition of Discovering the Jewish Jesus. We are in a very important study in the Word of God. We're going through the book of Romans line by line and precept by precept. We are today in the 11th chapter. This is part number 13 of season two. You can get this entire series on our website or through the contact information at the end of the broadcast today. On last week's broadcast, we were talking about Israel and Paul and the remnant within Israel. Paul is saying here that even though many in Israel are not believing, there's a remnant in Israel that are. And he said, I himself, I myself are one of the remnant that's believing. He said, it's just like it was in the days of Elijah. During the days of Elijah, there were only 7,000 Israelites that were walking with God. He said, it's the same thing today. Within every nation, whether it's in Israel, whether it's in America, whether it's in China, anywhere on the globe, there's a remnant within that nation that's walking with God. And Paul says this remnant is chosen. And so he gets done saying here in Romans chapter 11, and he says at the present time, in verse number five, in the same way there is a come to be at the present time a remnant according to God's gracious choice. In other words, just as it was in the days of Elijah, when the Lord had a remnant of 7,000 in Israel that were his, Paul said it's the same way at the present time. There's a remnant in every nation that truly belong to Jesus. Now, many Jewish people in Paul's day were not believing. But Paul said there was a plan in all this. So we're going to pick up today in verse number 11. Verse number 11, Romans chapter 11, Paul says, I say then, they did not stumble so as to fall, did they? May it never be, but by their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make them jealous. In other words, Paul is saying God still has a call on the nation of Israel. They're still his first covenant people. And even though many were not believing, Paul said it's not as though the word of God has failed. It's not as though the plan is not working the way it's supposed to. But instead, Paul said this was God's way of bringing the gospel, actually forcing the gospel to the Gentiles. This is illustrated most clearly in Paul's own life. You see, Paul, as a Hebrew of Hebrews, thought that when he came to the saving knowledge of Yeshua, that the Father would use him to reach other Jewish people. But instead, we find Paul at the temple praying, and the Lord comes to Paul while he's at the temple and speaks to him audibly and says to Paul, Paul, I'm sending you far away to the Gentiles, for your Jewish friends will not receive your testimony here. So you see, by the fact that many Jewish people were not receiving the gospel, it actually forced the gospel to the Gentiles. Paul was sent to the Gentiles because Israel wasn't receiving his witness. So let's continue on then, keeping that concept in mind. Verse 11, I say then, they did not stumble so as to fall, did they? He said, may it never be. But by their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make them jealous. In other words, by their unbelief, it pushed the gospel to the Gentiles. It was all part of God's plan. And then once the gospel has come to the Gentiles right now, God wants to now use the Gentiles to bring the Jewish people back, to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy. And so continuing on in verse 12, now if the transgression, if their transgression, if Israel's transgression be the richest for the world, in other words, when they rejected the gospel came to the entire world, so if their rejection meant that the whole world was blessed because the gospel came to them when they rejected, everybody's following me now, right? Paul thought he was going to go to the Jewish people. The Jewish people were not believing. Many of them, the majority, were not believing. And so Paul, God said to Paul, Paul, I'm going to send you to the Gentiles instead because you're not receiving your witness here. And so by their not receiving the witness, Paul went to the Gentiles, and as a result of Paul's going to the Gentiles, the gospel spread all, all over the globe. And so listen again in verse 12. Now, if their transgression be riches for the whole world, and their failure be riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their fulfillment be? In other words, Paul's saying, if you as a Gentile were blessed when Israel rejected the gospel, how much more, Mr. and Mrs. Gentile, will you be blessed when Israel receives the gospel? Paul said it's going to be so unbelievable. He uses this term, it's going to be like life from the dead. 
In other words, if the world was blessed when Jewish people were not receiving Jesus, how much more, Paul said, will the world be blessed when the Jewish people do receive Jesus? Hallelujah. And how are they going to receive Jesus? They're going to receive Jesus, Mr. and Mrs. Gentile, when you show Jewish people how real he is, what he's done for you, how he's answered your prayers. Mr. and Mrs. Gentile, let your light shine. Don't be intimidated about sharing your faith with Jewish people. Jewish people need Jesus. Paul just got done saying, there is no distinction between Jew or Greek. There's only one way, and that is the name of Jesus. We covered that on last week's broadcast. Now let's continue on. In verse number 13, but I'm speaking to you who are Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am an apostle of Gentiles, I magnify my ministry, if somehow I might move to jealousy my fellow countrymen and save some of them. In other words, Paul is saying this, that he is now the apostle to the Gentiles. Because remember, the Lord sent him to the Gentiles when Israel was not receiving. So Paul said, but he's not discouraged that his ministry is to the Gentiles. Remember, Paul's heart was to reach his own people. He, he got done telling us in Romans chapter number 9, verse number 1, he says, I'm telling the truth in Messiah. I am not lying, my conscience bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing grief in my heart, for I wish that I myself were accursed, separated from Messiah for the sake of my brethren. In other words, Paul saying he had great sorrow inside because his Israelite brothers were not believing. In chapter 10 of Romans, Paul begins this way, Romans 10, 1, brethren, my heart's desire and my prayer to God for them, for Israel, is for their salvation. So at the root of Paul's heart is his desire to see Israel saved. But he finds himself instead as the apostle to the Gentiles. But now Paul gets done telling us that he's magnifying his ministry to Gentiles. Why? Because Paul knows that it's going to be through the witness of Gentiles that Jewish people will be brought to faith. And so once again, Romans chapter 11, verse 11 I say then, they did not stumble, as to fall did, they may it never be. Now the next phrase. But by their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles, listen now, to make them jealous. In other words, Mr. and Mrs. Gentile believer today, God loves you so much, you're so much at the center of his plan today, he wants to use you to provoke Jewish people to jealousy. He wants Jewish people to see that God is real in your life. So Paul says he's magnifying his ministry to the Gentiles because he knows that it's going to be through the witness of Gentile believers that Jewish people are going to come to faith. So once again, he says here in verse 13, but I'm speaking to you who are Gentiles inasmuch that I am an apostle of Gentiles. I magnify my ministry to Gentiles if somehow I might move to jealousy my fellow countrymen and save some of them. For if their rejection be the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? And so he's saying it's going to be so incredible when God completes this plan of his and brings Jewish people to himself through you, Mr. and Mrs. Gentile. It is going to be such an incredible blessing if you were blessed when they rejected because the gospel came to you. He said, just imagine how blessed you're going to be when Jewish people come to faith. He describes it as life, hallelujah, from the dead. And even now when you look around and you see Jewish ministries springing forth and you see the anointing on some of God's Jewish evangelists today, you can see that God is doing this thing, hallelujah, that Paul is prophesying about here. And then he goes on to say that, uh, that, that uh, we need to be careful because if Jewish people will be broken off because of unbelief, that we too can be broken off because of unbelief. Look at verse number 18. Do not be arrogant toward the branches. In other words, don't be arrogant, Mr. and Mrs. Gentile, towards Jewish people. Unfortunately, that's exactly what has happened in the church at times. The church has, has got arrogant towards Jewish people. But Paul says, don't be arrogant towards the branch. Listen. Verse 18, do not be arrogant towards the branches, but if you are arrogant, remember that it is not you that supports the root, but the root supports you. In other words, Paul's saying, listen, this, the, Jesus came out of Israel. Your faith is founded, beloved, on the God of Israel. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, begins with these words. This is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. In Revelation 22, Jesus says he's coming back as the offspring of David. Paul says, don't be arrogant against Jewish people because it's the root of Judaism that supports your faith. In other words, Jesus is the lion from the tribe of Judah. 
So we need to love Jewish people. We need to appreciate the call that the Lord still has on the nation of Israel. We need to understand how God wants to use us to reach Jewish people. We want to have Paul's heart towards Jewish people, where Paul loved them. He desired to reach them. Paul said that his heart was the heart of the Holy Spirit when he said, my conscience in Romans chapter 9, verse 1, bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have unceasing grief in my heart for Israel. We need to love Israel, not be arrogant towards Israel. We need to understand the role that they still have in God's plan of redemption. We need to remember that God has not forsaken his people. We need to have a spirit of humility towards them, not arrogance. But on the other hand, we don't want to shrink back, beloved, from sharing the gospel because we're afraid that they won't like us. In other words, I have found many today within the church, they're so enamored by the fact that the Jewish people are God's chosen people, they think to themselves, who am I to share Jesus with the Jewish person? They're God's chosen people. And that is correct. The nation of Israel is a chosen nation. But beloved, there's no name under heaven by which men can be saved. And that's the name of Jesus. And Paul just got done telling us, and there's no distinction between Jew or Greek, that Jesus is the only way that the Father has made unto salvation, and that he's commissioned you, Mr. and Mrs. Gentile, in the love of God to reach out and share your precious faith in Jesus with Jewish people. So there's a balance to all this. Let's continue on. As we press through here, beloved, the word of God. Paul continues here in verse number 25. For I do not want you, brethren, to be uninformed of this mystery. Get ready here. There's a mystery. For I do not want you, brethren, to be uninformed of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own estimation, that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, and thus or then all Israel will be saved. So let's take this apart. Paul's saying, I don't want you to be uninformed of this mystery. What mystery is he talking about? That there's a temporary blindness on the nation of Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Once the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, all Israel will be saved. Let's look at this once again. Very, very important verse. For I do not want you, brethren, to be uninformed of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own estimation. In other words, lest you get a spirit of arrogance towards the nation of Israel. Paul just got done saying, don't be arrogant. So Paul said, you need to understand this. Listen now, that a partial hardening has happened to Israel. Forever? No. For a period of time. For how long? Paul continues on here. Until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. There's a partial hardening on Israel until the fullness of Gentiles has come in. And then Paul continues on, and then all Israel will be saved, just as it is written, the deliverer will come forth from Zion and will remove ungodliness from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins, saith the Lord. Here's what's going on here. When Paul says, I want to tell you a mystery, that is a partial hardening on Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, and then all Israel will be saved. This is what he's saying. He's not saying, beloved, just that God has focusing now on the Gentiles, and when he's saved all the Gentiles, then he's going to turn towards Israel again. That's not what he's saying. He's saying when the Gentiles have come in in fullness, both in numbers and in, get this now, and in Mr. and Mrs. Gentile, I say that in the love of the Lord, and in, listen now, stepping into your calling, and what is your calling? Your calling in verse number 11 of Romans chapter 11 is to provoke Jewish people to jealousy. Remember, Paul got done saying that God has turned his attention to Gentiles to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy. And Paul said, that's why I magnify my ministry to Gentiles, because I know that it's going to be through the witness of Gentile believers that Jewish people will be brought to faith. And now in verse 25, Paul is saying, I want you to understand this mystery, that when the fullness of Gentiles have come into faith, both in numbers and in them walking in their calling to share their love of God, of Jesus, with Jewish people in terms of provoking them to jealousy when the Jewish people see this person really has something uh, supernatural in their life. They really have the love of God in their life. I see tangible evidence that God is in this person's life. When Jewish people see that in Gentile believers, it's going to bring the full number of Jewish people that are the Lord's into that salvation experience. Let's read it one more time. I know that we're being redundant here, but I want you to really get this. Many over the years have been taught that this is the age of the Gentiles, and once God's done saving all the Gentiles, then he's going to save the Jewish people. Beloved, that's not really the fullness of what God's saying here. What God is saying here is that when Gentiles come to faith 
in the fullness of numbers and in them accepting their role and call to reach Jewish people, this is what's going to bring Jewish people into the salvation experience. In other words, it's not just that God's going to focus on the Gentile and then focus on the Jew, but rather as Gentiles come into faith and walk in their call to love Jewish people into the kingdom, this is what's going to result in their salvation. Listen once again. Verse 25. For I do not want you, brethren, to be uninformed of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own estimation, that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, come to faith and come into their calling of sharing their love for Messiah Jesus and their faith in Messiah Jesus with Jewish people. What's going to happen, beloved, that will bring Jewish people to faith? And when Jewish people come to faith, beloved, Jesus is going to return. So you need to understand that you sharing your faith with Jewish people, beloved, is tied in to the Lord's return. When there's a mass of Jewish people, when there's a critical mass of Jewish people on the earth that have come into faith the Messiah Jesus largely because of and through the witness of Gentile believers sharing Jesus with Jewish people, who he is, the Jewish Jesus, what will happen when this critical mass of Jewish people comes to faith through the witness of Gentile believers and they begin to call upon the name of the Lord? At that point, Jesus is going to return. Remember, Jesus said to his disciples upon the earth when they were at the temple, Jesus pointed at the temple and he said, not one stone's going to be left upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. And then he also said, and you will not see me again until you're saying, what? Blessed be the name of he that comes in the name of the Lord. So when there's this critical mass of Jewish people that have come to faith on earth through the witness of Gentile believers and they begin to call upon Jesus to return, this is what's going to usher in, beloved, the return of Jesus Christ, the return of Yeshua Mashiach. Let me read it again, verse 25 and 26. I hope that you're seeing this. For I do not want you, brethren, to be uninformed of this mystery lest you be wise in your own estimation that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. In other words, Gentiles are now in the faith and they're sharing their faith with Jewish people. They've come into the faith. They're accepting their calling, Romans 11, 11, to provoke the Jew to jealousy. As a result of that, Jewish people are coming to faith. They're calling upon Jesus to return. Jesus returns and every Jew that's alive on the face of the earth when he returns will be saved. Verse 26, and then all Israel will be saved just as it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. He will remove ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. So do you see the critical role, beloved, that you have in reaching Jewish people with the gospel of Jesus? Do you see how much Jesus loves the Jewish people? Do you see, beloved, how his return is tied in to the salvation of the nation of Israel and he's counting on you, Mr. and Mrs. Gentile believer, to share your faith with them and invite Jewish people, beloved, to receive him? Beloved, hallelujah, this is such a mystery and that's why Paul concludes here with these words in verse 33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who became his counselor? Or who has first given to him that it might be paid back to him? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. In other words, Paul saying this was such an incredible plan that God had. Who could have ever figured it out? that God began by choosing the nation of Israel out of all the nations in the face of the earth to be a holy possession to him and a royal priesthood. And through the nation of Israel, God brought forth the revelation of scriptures to the world through. And through the nation of Israel, God brought the Messiah to the world through. When Messiah came, much of Israel rejected him. And so what God did is he brought the gospel through Paul and other apostles to the Gentiles. As the Gentiles received the gospel, the gospel started spreading all over the world. Now that the Gentiles have received the gospel, God has put in their heart a love for Jewish people, just like he did the apostle Paul. And God is saying to the Gentile believer, I still have a special plan in my heart for the nation of Israel. Romans 9, 1, I'm still grieving for their salvation. And Mr. and Mrs. Gentile, I want to use you to provoke them to jealousy. I want them to see in you, my beloved Gentile child, that I'm real. I want Jewish people to see in you, Mr. and Mrs. Gentile, that God loves Israel. I want Israel 
world to see in you, Mr. and Mrs. Gentile, how much God loves them and how real I am to you so that they will be jealous and they'll want what you have. They'll want a personal relationship with me like the one that you have. And through your being obedient and being bold and through your obedience to me and taking this calling upon you, Mr. and Mrs. Gentile, God says, I'm going to bring Jewish people to faith. There's going to be a critical mass of Jewish people on earth that will come to faith as a result of my Gentiles' children's witness. And when this critical mass, beloved, of Jewish people on earth comes to faith and they begin to cry out to the Lord. They begin to say, as Yeshua said in the Gospels, Baruch haba, Bashem Adonai, blessed is he that comes upon, calls upon the name of the Lord. As my Jewish people on earth that have come to salvation begin to call upon me to return. Let the spirit of the bride say, come. Jesus said, that will usher in my return. I will appear in the sky. Everyone on earth will see me, even those that pierce me. And every Jewish person that's alive on planet earth will be saved. Oh, how great, Paul says. He concludes this incredible plan of God. And he says in verse number 33, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. You see how God has this thing? First, we're dependent on the Jewish people. Now the Jewish people are dependent on the witness of Gentile believers. That God then has made everybody equal. That he shut up the whole world in disobedience. That he's exalted Jesus alone. And that we all, beloved, have a role to play in God's great plan of redemption. Well, I want to ask you to stand with me right now. I usually get down on my knee. I want to ask you to stand with me now. Would you open your heart to allow God to do with your life what he wants to do with your life? Will you allow God to use you the way he wants to use you? If you're Jewish right now and are watching this broadcast, I want to invite you after you've been hearing me th preach through the book of Romans, I want to invite you to receive Jesus. Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, I'll come into him and sup with him and he with me. If you're a Gentile right now, I want you to step into the fullness of your calling. As you step into the fullness of your calling and begin to share your faith with Jew and Gentile alike, what will happen is there's going to be a critical mass of Jewish people, beloved, that will come to faith in Messiah Jesus. And when this critical mass of Jewish people comes to faith in Messiah Jesus and begins to call upon him to return, behold, Jesus is going to come on the clouds of heaven with glory, beloved, and he's going to make this world the kingdoms of God and of the Messiah. And you know what? It's all tied together with you and me playing our part and being obedient to his plan. Let's, beloved, love Jesus, surrender our lives to him, and be obedient to his call on our lives. You and I are the Yedidim of the Father. We're the beloved ones, beloved, of God. I want to thank you today for watching Discovering the Jewish Jesus. Did you know that Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a partnership between the Lord, you, and me? You see, beloved, without you, I can't continue to broadcast. It costs me thousands of dollars every week to air this ministry. If you believe that the Lord is in this ministry, if you're being helped by it, and you believe others are being helped by it, I want to ask you to open your heart and ask the Holy Spirit if you should sow financially back into it. See, the Word of God tells us that when we're receiving spiritually from a ministry, we as God's people should respond to that ministry we're receiving from by sowing financially back into it. I'm not relying on product sales, rather I'm relying on God's people being touched by the Holy Spirit to finance this ministry. I'm looking, beloved, to build a relationship with those people that God has assigned to support this ministry. So once again, would you just open your heart? If you feel the Holy Spirit nudging you, leading you to sow financially into this ministry, beloved, just obey Him. Do it immediately, and I know you'll be blessed because there is a blessing for obedience. God bless you, and thank you. Shalom. Shalom, Chavarim. Rabbi Schneider and I are Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah. As a Gentile believer, having partnered with Discovering the Jewish Jesus, I feel more complete as a follower of Yeshua, and I am confident that the Lord will do the same for you. Here is how you can partner with us. Send your tax-deductible gift to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, P.O. Box 777, 
Blissfield, Michigan, 49228. That's P.O. Box 777, Blissfield, Michigan, 49228. To make a credit card donation, call 1-800-240-1303. 1-800-240-1303. To donate securely online, go to discoveringthejewishjesus.com. To show our appreciation, we will send you an audio CD with one of Rabbi Schneider's recent teachings. If you are interested in Messianic music by Joshua James or other Messianic artists or more teaching resources by Rabbi Schneider, please go to discoveringthejewishjesus.com. To have Rabbi Schneider or a ministry team member come and speak at your congregation, please have your pastor or leader call 1-800-240-1303. God bless you, Baruch Hashem, and Shalom. Hi, I'm Cynthia Schneider, Rabbi Schneider's wife. I want to thank all of you who have sent in donations to make this broadcast possible. Thank you for your sacrifice, your faithfulness to the Lord, You are the pillars that hold this ministry up, and we pray for God's blessings to be poured back into your life. God bless you, and shalom. You did as we close today. I'm going to be singing over you the ironic blessing found in the book of Bamidbar, or Numbers, chapter 6, verse 22 through 27. The Lord, Yahweh, told the children of Israel that by singing this prayer, by speaking this prayer over His people, that we'd be invoking His name on His people and that He would in turn bless us. Ye sad and I panave lecha, ve asem lecha. Shalom. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift you up with his countenance, and may Yahweh give you, his children, his peace. As a deer goes for the water, so my soul longs for you. As a deer for you.